For many observers, Bordeaux and its prestigious wine-producing chateau seem as though perched atop an ivory tower where they would stand alone, devoid of the curiosity to recognize that wines, as refined as their own, might exist elsewhere. For still others, American vineyards are just brands to be marketed like so many formatted industrial strength varietal wines. There seems to be little desire to excel in the art of blending and crafting wines that reflect their microclimates, what the Bordelais refer to as terroir. This, these observers believe, is what their European counterparts strive to do in the vineyards of France and in those of Bordeaux in particular. To these cliches, we say nonsense. Once and for all, it's time to rise above such unfounded preconceptions. Over the past two centuries, the wine-growing regions of Bordeaux and California have formed an intimate and lasting couple. Their close cultural, economic, and commercial ties find their roots in a four-day period long ago. Imagine that we're at the end of May 1787. It is there, in the midst of the European Enlightenment, that the cultural marriage between the wines of Bordeaux and the nascent United States was cemented. Bordeaux owes much of this unique and rewarding union to one remarkable and enlightened individual, namely Thomas Jefferson, soon to become the third president of the United States. We will reveal how he came to be enamored of Bordeaux and its wines. Ever since, Bordeaux and America have been united by close trade links and by a mutual desire to work together while rebuffing isolationism. This is the investigation that we are going to conduct. You will witness how today's greatest wine producing estates, be they in Bordeaux or in the Napa and Sonoma Valleys, have become the worthy heirs to this cultural alliance. Together, they have transcended what some simply call the business of wine. This is the story we're going to tell. 